Hi, we're just about to begin. I hope I'm live and uh, I'm just uh, grabbed a cup of coffee. So go get a cup of coffee and we'll wait a few moments to make sure folks are coming on. And uh, we had a few, I had a few technical difficulties, but uh, um, got them figured out. Hi, Jan's there and uh, we'll soon start in just a minute or two, but be sure to go and sit in a comfortable chair, get a cup of coffee and uh, come join us for church. Uh, virtual church as it is today. So I'm not sure what everyone's been up to all week, but I'm sure we've uh, mostly been up to staying at home and just going out as needed and necessary and shopping when we have to. But I want to welcome everyone to worship today. I'm Reverend Karen Lumley from St. Andrews River Heights United Church. And I'm coming from you from my home to your home. So sit back, like I said, grab a cup of coffee and relax. Church is coming to us in a different format these days because we can't be meeting together as we normally do as a faith community in the building. Even though the church building is closed, we are coming to you via live stream. You can pick up messages on Facebook. You can get the um, news from the weekly, just sign up online. And although the office is closed, you can still contact Charlotte or I through the phones, through messages on email or um, any other way, social media. So please do call and uh, do keep in touch. Enjoy the service. I have a few announcements. It's interesting when you're doing virtual church and the church is closed, the building at least, you have very few announcements. Palm Sunday is next Sunday and we will celebrate that. And then after Palm Sunday is Holy Week and we will be celebrating that as well with the live stream service Palm Sunday, also on Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. and also on Good Friday at 10.30. So come and join us and then for the Sunday service at 10.30. So let us gather together to get let us gather together as we center on our worship. When life feels like a valley of dry bones, the spirit clothes our hearts with flesh and breathes new life into our souls. When our souls seem withered away, God breathes new life into us once more. Come, let us worship God. Praise the Lord of life. Praise the one who brings us back from the grave. In Christ, we will never truly die. Praise the Lord of life. And I'm going to try to light the candles today. Last week, I had forgotten. But usually we light the peace candle. But today, I'm going to light the Christ candle, symbolizing to us as a faith community that we are called to be the church and that Christ is the light of our world. I'm also going to write the rain light the rainbow candle, which usually is the candle that represents all are included in this place, all are welcome in this place. And also that we come together to go out into the world to be the church. Now I know that we cannot go out into the world in the way that we have been in the past, but we can still be the church. We can still be the church and go out into the world. The church may be closed, the building, but we may find ourselves open to new ways of being the church in an ever-changing world. Let us pray. God of promise and hope, we come to you feeling that our lives are dried up like a valley filled with dry bones as the reading is in Ezekiel. We pray that you would share your vision of new life with us that we might have hope for our future. Bring us up from COVID-19, the cloud that is over us, that we might live as the people of promise. Put your spirit within us, that we might have life everlasting. And I do have a children's time. That's one of my favorite times in church. So I brought my bag of goodies because I thought we could plan for COVID-19 and being at home. So I brought my bag and it's from Guatemala from one of the mission trips um, experiences that I was on. And so in my bag are lots of things for us, for you, for this coming week. Now you probably have some paper to draw on because 
you know, it's something you can do and write. You have some water so that you can have a nice drink. You have some snacks. Now I don't have juice at my house, so it would have to be pop. Um, at your house, you might have some healthier snacks, um, chips. And I also have a healthy snack because truly we probably should be eating that, an apple. You have some books to read. Some colored pencils, because maybe you want to color, maybe you want to write some notes to people, maybe you want to do some different things. Be creative. There's some pens and pencils so that you can write. And one of the things you can do, which is what I saw in the news in Calgary, is they're writing notes, thinking of you, drawing hearts, we will get through this together. Some of them are putting them on the sidewalks with chalk. Some of them are putting them in their windows um, so that when people walk by and uh, maintaining the social distance that they need to, they can still see the signs and the messages of hope. And another thing you can do is all of you, I'm sure, are working on the computer with your schoolwork. You're working on um, different things that can help you keep interested in things. There's a really good um, YouTube it's called Time to Come In Bear, a children's story about social distancing. It's written by Kim St. Lawrence and read by Ryan St. Lawrence. And it's about less than two minutes, and it's a great story to help children understand what social distancing is. And we'll put that up on the website so that you can find it and track it down and uh, maybe listen to it with your children. And so as we would have children's time with the kids, I would always ask them questions so they would have responded with different things. I would have said, what are you doing this week? And they probably would have told me all the different things. And I've been on Facebook. So some of the kids have been going for walks. Some of the kids have been outside playing. Some of them have been eating more, at ho obviously at home, around their tables together. But they have been spending time together with their parents and with um, their brothers and sisters. And so people are gathering in different ways, and we gather today together. So let us read our scripture reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. It is the story of, the, of Lazarus, who is sick and dies. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, from the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was Mary who had anointed the Lord with ointment, and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now the sisters therefore sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness is not unto death, for the glory of God, the Son of God, may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When therefore he heard that he was sick, he stayed for two days longer in the place where he was at. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the people were seeking to stone you. They are there, they're going to find you. But Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the light, he stumbles because the light is not in him. This Jesus said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go that I may awaken him out of sleep. The disciples therefore said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will wake up. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. Then Jesus said to them, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I am not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. Thomas, therefore, who is called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with Jesus. So when they came, he found that he had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary sat in the house. Martha said to Jesus, 
Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother shall rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall never die. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die but live forever. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. And when he said this, he went away and called Mary his sister, saying secretly, The teacher is here. The teacher is calling for you. And when she heard it, she arose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Mary met him. The people who were there with him in the house and consoling her saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb where Lazarus was and to weep with him there. Therefore, when Mary went and saw Jesus, she saw him, fell at his feet, and saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And so the Jews were saying, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of him who was blind have kept this man from dying? Jesus therefore again said, and was deeply moved, came to the tomb, and it was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, and said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you, If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. And so they removed the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I knew that thou heard me, and you will always hear me. And because of the people standing round, I said it, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forward. And he who died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many therefore of the people who had come to Mary and beheld what he had done believed. May God bless the reading of God's holy word. Now we all know that these are strange times that we can no longer do all the things we used to do. And there are experiences that we have never experienced before. Each and, eight, each and every week, things are changing. Sometimes it's hard for us to change, to deal with life on life's terms, to be at home with our partners, with our families, with our kids. We have all had dreams and hopes and even plans that have been shattered amidst COVID-19. Our lives go on, but they go on differently. Today, we're going to focus on our lives before COVID-19 and remember maybe some of the struggles you've had through your life. Perhaps it was a marriage that broke down. Perhaps it was bankruptcy, downsizing, companies merging together, the death of a child, of a family member, of a friend, a parent, someone you loved. Perhaps it's a broken relationship with a colleague, an adult child. Perhaps it's being separated from those that you love, grief, or a chronic illness that is not COVID-19. Perhaps it's financial problems, which a lot of people are experiencing during this time of COVID-19. Perhaps it's a loss of employment, a loss of things to do, of company, of people to be with. COVID-19 right now has changed our lives drastically. And they say that life will never be the same. We as a faith community had hoped to celebrate Palm Sunday in our church with the children doing a play and waving of the palm leaves. We will celebrate, but we will celebrate differently. 
We will celebrate through social media, which so many of you are accustomed to using and are seeing family face to face through the screen. We evolve as a church as, as times change and evolve. And so we are offering church through live stream. We're offering church through the Facebook page, through YouTube, through a paper copy. Just contact us and let us know. The season of Lent is almost over, but the road to Easter runs through the tomb. Before we can get to the Easter story, we need to deal with the realities and despair and struggles of life. We can't arrive at Easter destination till we go through the journey. Now Mary and Martha had had a tough time because Lazarus, their brother, was very sick and died. And they know that had Jesus just got there earlier, Lazarus would never have died. They know that if Jesus had to self-isolate, he could have gone to the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. It was his safe place. It was a place where he could go when he needed to get away, when he, ne when he needed to relax, when he needed to put his feet up and not think about the work that he was having to do and not think about Easter. He could go there and be present. And they would tend to his needs and also minister to his spirit. Mary and Martha had prayed. And I'm sure like many of us who have prayed, and it seems like God has not answered our prayer, that in the struggle, we don't see that God is still there. Sometimes people say to me, well, I prayed and, and I'm a good person. I'm a godly person. I go to church all the time. I try to be good. I try to love my neighbor. I try to do the things that God calls me to. And yet, these difficult times and difficult things happen. COVID-19 seems to be overwhelming many people, and it is an ever-ending, never-ending reality. Maybe we can see it as a new beginning, see it differently. Rather than isolating and being separated, we can see it as seeing each other differently, spending time with those we want and can and care about through the screen, through social media. Spending time with those who are near to us and dear to us. It can be a time of of realigning our priorities. It can be a time of a door being opened. One of the things on Facebook, one of the families said, we're eating at our family dinner dining table, that we're eating together more than we used to. I'm seeing how my children learn. I'm understanding the difficulties teachers have. We're traveling through the disappointments and the despair and the discouragement. Perhaps travel plans have been canceled or at least postponed. Perhaps you've been away and then you come back and you have to isolate for 14 days. Perhaps you are alone. Perhaps your only way of communicating to your family is through phone calls, through friends, through social media. We see our world very differently today. But the Easter, Easter celebration the road to that joy does come. Sometimes it's, it's a road of suffering, of grief, of disappointment. Lazarus died before Jesus got there. Maybe he wanted to say goodbye to his dear friend. Maybe Mary and Martha needed him there. Can just imagine that casseroles coming over from the neighbors. The sympathy cards have all been sent. People are there comforting Mary and Martha in their loss and their loss, because they truly do love and care about Lazarus. Lent is a time of preparation for Easter. The impact of the journey between Holy Week, uh, Passion Sunday, or Palm Sunday and Easter is a long, difficult journey. Sometimes our journey is long and difficult, but there is at the end of the journey the wonderful news of the Easter story, just a few weeks away. The power of the Easter story is previewed in the story of Lazarus. For Lazarus was dead and rose again. We have tombs in our life that we need to roll away. Disappointments, discouragement, things that have just not worked for us. The detours of life. But we too can be empowered to celebrate the Easter story. We can realize Living life on life's term can be difficult. But today we celebrate the courage of Jesus and we even see the humanity of Jesus as he wept 
as he cried because his friend had died. We see the pain and the grief of Mary and Martha because their beloved brother has passed. It's not easy to follow Jesus, to go where Jesus goes. It's not easy on that road to the Easter story. But our faith can empower us in these tough times to walk together, to be with and for each other in the ways that we can. We can stand at the road to Easter and know that we are not alone, that God is with us. We know that the world does not have the last word, that we do not have the last word, but God does because God is with us. We can get to the joy of the Easter story and the hope of the Easter story. But first, we have to recognize the difficulties, the tombs, the defeats and disappointments in our lives. A few weeks ago, we talked about Nicodemus and of being born again. We talked of the blind man who was healed, stories of miracles that were happening in Jesus' day. Some of you may have read some of William Barclay's stories. He's a well-known theologian. And he was asked if he believed miracles in the Bible. He defined miracles, he said, as symbols of what God can do today. He used the story of Jesus calming the storm. He said that his daughter, 21 years old, had drowned. And God did not stop that from happening. But what God did do was help him through that storm, through the difficulty, and led him to the Easter joy and Easter hope restored his spirituality. COVID-19 will not have the last word. These are days of new beginnings. We are on the road to Easter, and as we move towards Easter, the hope of the everlasting life, the hope of the Easter story that we experience is the power of Christ in our lives. This happens when we roll away the stones of bitterness, of disappointment, of anger, of sorrow. We will survive. The world will not have the last word. We will not have the last word. God will have the last word. These are the days of new beginnings. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. All who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And everyone who believes in me will never die, for they shall live. These are words spoken by Jesus to Mary and Martha. They are words spoken to us. They are words often used at a celebration of life. They are words spoken on Easter Sunday. It is the power that we have in God to deal with the defeats and the discouragements of our lives. A.J. Gossip, who's a minister in Glasgow, Scotland, and also a teacher in Trinity College, is one who said that he had a very difficult time in his life. He buried his young wife of 21 years old. And he went and he preached that Sunday and he preached on the story of when life falls apart. And he said, you know, my life has fallen apart since my wife has died. But you know, I, I think about the sinking sand, the sinking water, and how when I got to the bottom, it was, wasn't sinking. I was sinking on the way, but when I got to the bottom, it was solid. And that, my friends, is the good news that when I touched bottom, I did not sink, for God was there. My bottom was solid. We can survive, survive these days of COVID-19. We can survive the separation. We can survive the pain and the suffering. We can survive whatever comes our way because the stones are being rolled away and that God is with us. Remember, my friends, the world will not have the last word. We will not have the last word. God will have the last word. Give faith simply a try and believe, for God is with us in these days. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God in whom we live and move and have our being, hear our prayers. We pray for those affected by this pandemic. Pandemic. We remember the many lives that are lost to this virus. We pray for those who may still have their darkest nights ahead. We pray for all who mourn and are troubled. We pray for anxious parents and children and partners and the elderly. We pray for healthcare workers and emergency responders. We pray for the frontline workers 
for our lifeline workers in grocery stores, for pharmacies and farms and truckers. We pray for everyone who is caring for the most vulnerable. We pray for the ministry of One Just City, who ministers to the homeless, the underloved in our sites at Oak Table, West Broadway, and St. Matthew's, Maryland Community Ministry. We pray for those in our faith community who are in the hospital, who are sick. We pray for Mary Campbell, for Lou Rutledge, and Joyce Barber. We also pray for Bonnie Cross, Cross, who is recuperating from hip surgery. Be with them. We pray for our leaders to have wisdom to help us to know what to do. May they put people before profit. Be with this faith community. Be with all faith communities as they try to find new ways to be the church differently. And teach us to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you go from this service, in your home, may you be blessed. May you know that you are not alone, that God is with you. Remember to wash your hands. Keep your social distance, be safe, and know that the world does not have the last word, that you do not have the last word, that God has the last word. Love your neighbors, love one another, go in peace, and be safe. May God bless you. Amen. Thanks for joining us, and see you next week. Bye-bye.